Today we have our good friends Jason Wisdom and Count Seth from Be- Becoming the Archetype. Is that is hey! that how you do it? Wow, Archetype? you pronounced you it correctly. It. You, Ar- it. you know, why why have an E in there if it's an I sound? Ask the it, it's just English. Greeks. Is it just, is it the is that a Greek word? I think that'd be Greek, yeah. Is that a Latin it's Greek? Word? Well, fuck them. <laughs> and we're off to the races. <laughs> I, I already struggled with Greek enough in seminary. I don't need to do the English Greek shit either. I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired like, of Greek uh, all now around. A couple instances of French. I was going to say, <laughs> pardon my French. You know, you're uh, you're doing quite well in the French department, Mason. <laughs> well, I know a few of those French words, but uh, we're going to talk about uh, these guys playing Furnace Fest here in about six weeks. We're really, really stoked to see them. Uh, so oh we'll talk gosh. about that. We we'll talk about practice. We'll talk about, uh, you know, whatever else comes up. It, I think it's just going to be one of those episodes where we just kind of hang out and see what happens. Uh, so we'll just hang out for an hour and who knows what might just transpire. But uh, uh, before we get into all that, Jason and Seth, how are you guys doing? Go ahead, Jason. I am doing well. Go ahead, Seth. Good. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Seth and I like to party. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's nice to be here with you guys. I uh, I finally got my technology sorted out, and I've done it in such a way that I can show off the baseball cards over uh, this shoulder. So I, I think that all is well with the world. Are they all Atlanta Brave baseball cards? Uh, not all of them. Uh, some of them are like cool other players, like Satchel Paige, the oh, greatest nice. baseball player, best, especially the best pitcher in, in history. And I got some great Satchel Paige stories, if you want me to tell them. Uh, do you well, still I'm have your uh, league star? Do you so still have your, your business? Card. Do you still have your business of your um, uh, your communist baseball cards? <laughs> I haven't started the uh, the Lutheran socialist baseball cards yet, but it's uh, it's it's uh, being worked on indefinitely. Oh. Well, I I want to get in on the on the rookie on the rookie cards. I don't know. You do you want to do you want a Cullen Mack rookie card? Is that what you need? Uh. Well, I, I just I just want some of your your Lutheran socialist rookie cards. Oh, like Paul Tillich, yeah, and a yeah, Bonhoeffer one, yeah. I, oh, I get give it. me give me Bonhoeffer. I'm all I'm all for that. Dude, you should you should talk to Jason about these videos he sends me from uh, Instagram of these pulls these guys do. Yeah, they're pulling out like Saddam Hussein rookie cards <laughs> and uh, wow from like those Desert Storm cards, you know. <laughs> Saddam, Is this Hussein the one where he's pictured with card, Clinton? You know, like. Yeah. It's, is that the uh, one where he's like literally standing next to Bill Clinton? I don't know about that. Oh, okay. I can't confirm. I don't. I'm not here to promote that guy's Instagram. Oh, that's probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have his like attributes? Like you know, his like attribute of like how good he was at like terrorism and his like gunshot <laughs> attribute. And I don't know. I think it's how good of a shot lines. he was. And... Seth has informed me that. Uh, so here's the funny part. Seth has informed me that I guess these guys are spoofing. Some people who actually deal with baseball cards. See, I don't know. So I'm laughing entirely without context that some guys like George W. Bush, gold foil, rookie card, Mr. September himself. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm just That was the best one. Seth was like, oh, this is them spoofing a baseball card thing. I'm like, oh, I just thought. So it's not just a base. You guys have to know about this breakers, right? So they get sealed boxes of cards and then they break them in like live streams. And then when yeah. they have a big hit, you know, like an autograph or a, a numbered, like, you know, number two out of five, you know, yeah. parallel. And they'll be like, wow, big hit. You know, that's do what they do. Like that's Pokemon what cards. What's that? Do they do Pokemon cards? Pro- probably. I don't know about, about those. I just follow the baseball card one, but I'm sure there are Pokemon breakers. I'm sure there so. is. It's, it's a big be. it's a big thing plaguing the industry, which is really the important thing for us to talk about is breakers and baseball cards and Pokemon. I think it's very important. Um, so I don't know if that was sarcasm there, but uh, I, I will like tell you this. I want to tell you a story about the biggest time I was envious is um. so when bands release albums, often the label, they don't do this much anymore, but they used to do like a uh, pre-order incentive. And it'd be something cool. So like one year we did like pocket protectors because we were going for the nerd thing. So you could get a, sure. a beard skull, Clifton beard skull pocket protector, you know, to put in your pocket and put your pens in. And you do stuff like that. And people did some creative things. August Burn, Burns Red one year did baseball cards. The label found a way to make baseball cards of the members of ABR. 
and then put them in little like foil packs. And if you pre-ordered their album, you got the baseball cards. And I was like, wow. Yeah, I was like, I, I didn't know this was possible. I want to do this, but you know, it's too late because they'd already done it. So they probably Curtis, wouldn't have Curtis been able to fit that. Jason's head on uh, a baseball card. It's, <laughs> it's just there's no photo that would be able to actually fit onto the size of a baseball card. <laughs> Speaking of that, we always wanted to play this thing called Furnace Fest, and now 23 something years later, we get a chance. I mean, yeah, and they a, have baseball cards story. too. Furnace right. Fest was one of those. Yeah, and they have baseball cards that we could potentially be on. So. I hope so. But here's yeah. the deal. Last time we talked to you guys, um, you said that you didn't have any equipment and that you found that you saw that there was no possible way that you were going to be able to get equipment and that no one wants to share their equipment with you. Uh, so yeah. something obviously has changed because you guys have played quite a few shows since then. Um, quite a few. I mean, quite a few. We've I mean, played two. Two is a lot more than you've played in the last five that's years. That's a lot more than zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, that, that's that's more than double what you've played before. <laughs> it's yeah, literally, who, who it's literally have to infinite sweep? times the amount. Yes. <laughs> we have played infinitely times the amount of shows in the last nine months than we did for the previous ten years. Yeah. So yes. Wow. Who did you, who did you guys have to sweet talk to uh, actually make this happen to play at least two shows? Jesus. Well, so <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how it works. <laughs> um, Ask so, you shall receive. So the the um, fun, just fun side tangent. Um, so August Burns Red, we played with them back. Uh, we did a tour in what was it? Oh seven or oh six? Oh six. Demon 06 Hunter. 06. With Demon Hunter oh. and August Burns Red. Oh. And uh, if you want to know the rest of and the you guys lineup, were headlining that right. No, uh, we, <laughs> yeah, Demon us, Hunter was opening Demon for Hunter, <laughs> Zayo, uh, Spoken, and Becoming the Archetype, and Oxburn's Red co opening. Wow, sharing. Well, we... No, he froze. He but yeah, wow, that is, but that, like, yeah. that many opening bands that are just like banger after banger after banger. That's impressive, uh, pressing opener. Yeah. So, so anyway, so we knew the guys in August Burns Red, they were putting together their uh, Christmas Burns Red, which is something they do every year. That was really awesome. Um, they worked out doing like a solid state day and uh, they were super kind to invite us. They uh, rumor has it. We were one of, if not the first band that they were like, we, we got to have those guys. Um, so that'll be my claim to fame uh, is Dang. that August Burns Red wanted us to play with them. <laughs> it, what, 15, 16 years later? They're like so. one of those Christian bands that actually stayed Christian all these years. We're going to take them first before anyone else. Yeah. And so, and so yeah. they've lent you their stuff or what? Uh, well, we played their, we played the festival with them. Yeah. And um, Duck, our drummer, actually does have gear. He, in fact, when we played that show, I believe he still had the same drum heads on his drums. No, he changed them for the album. But when he came in for the studio with those drums, it still had the same drum heads as the Celestial Completion album we did in 2010, 2011, um, or whatever that was. So the drum heads had been on there for more than a decade when he recorded. Wow. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. But yeah, so he actually has a drum set. So we brought that up and the rest of us sort of found people we could borrow things from we we do have some of our own gear we just don't have all the pieces we need so yeah. you know we obviously right. have our own guitars i have my own keyboard you know tuners that kind of stuff we just need to like <laughs> have tuners yeah. we have, we have tuners. With the little ones that clip on you, the little ones that clip <laughs> onto the head of your guitar Can you imagine that would, it's better than like the little flip ones right <laughs> oh my remember God. those like little tuning they come fork with like your first stage. everyone <laughs> 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 Use your phone. I use my phone all the time now if I want to tune my guitar. So you guys could just do, you use do that. Use the G strings app. Yeah. yeah, the G string app. That's that's where it's at. Okay, that's right. I'm afraid of downloading this. <laughs> well, <laughs> Covenant Eyes will definitely uh, alert uh, your wife. Probably is that a thing? Yeah, I didn't know Covenant on that one. Eyes. Okay, I should know this. I guess since I teach at a Christian school, but yeah, you should. I should know about Covenant Eyes. <laughs> but okay, so hold on. I had one more one more uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon here. So. Um, so then we're, we were going to play Furnace Fest, right? Well, it turns out that when we did our first album, we got to travel to Tooth & Nail Records, old building that they had. And Chad Johnson was an A&R guy there at the time. 
And uh, one time I caught him in the kitchen making a Vegemite sandwich, uh, which is Ooh, a very Chad Johnson that, thing to do. Is he is he secretly Australian? Yeah, no, say. no. Um, but yeah, so we've known Chad for a long time, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, so he was really kind to invite us to play Furnace Fest. So they were. Well, you should make him a Vegemite uh, sandwich uh, in six weeks. And uh, let's see if he remembers the the good old days of him eating Vegemite. Uh, or sandwiches. I could make it now and then bring it to him in six weeks, and we'll see how the sandwich <laughs> holds up. Probably will. It would, it would taste the exact same. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All those preservatives. Well, uh, let's hear about the story of how you guys got roped into playing Furnace Fest. Was it as simple as, hey, they DM'd you on Instagram and and that was it? Or uh, or do you have to like pull more strings? Or yeah, how, how did that whole story go down? Well, Duck, our drummer, is had had he he went last year to Furnace Fest and he had some connections. Was he and playing? He had, what's that? Did he play at Furnace Fest for a, no, he like didn't a different play. band? He or? just went last year to watch bands. Oh, fun. Um, we like music. So he said, yeah, you know, you should, we should, we should be on. So he's kind of emailing them, texting them. And so finally, they, one of their people got a hold of me. And his name was Ryan Luther. And I said, <laughs> hey, Luther, I'm Lutheran. You have to have us on. And he said, which kind of Lutheran? And I said, Martin Lutheran. And he said, okay, so... Uh, I said, give us a million dollars. And he said, okay. And so then we're headlining uh, after whoever that that other band is that plays that day. I think Turd Style's headlining the day we play. True story. Did you just say Turd? Did you just say Turd Style? Turd. Turd Turd Style. If you're you're pronouncing it Turd Style, I'm definitely pronouncing it Archetype. (laughs) (laughs) I did not say that. And I really like their band. In fact. Well, that's good. That's good. Wow. It's, I think that's one band that you are not allowed to say you don't like. What if you haven't heard of them? Seth, Seth doesn't know anything about them, I'm sure. Yeah, so Seth, just remember, you can't say you don't like them. Yeah. That's right, you I can, can't. You can say that you've never heard of them, but yeah. at least don't say you don't like them. I mean, yeah. I can preemptively dislike them because I'm a curmudgeon, but, you know. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> they are great. Well, they're okay. great. Why is their name Turd Style? <laughs> You can ask Jason that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's slandering them so much. I didn't realize that they were just uh, shelling out a million dollars to play uh, Furnace Fest, especially to a band that hasn't played for almost 10 years. That's the draw. We haven't played in almost 10 years, and there's literally dozens of people begging to see us, and that was worth a lot of money to them. So Wow. Yeah. Maybe you guys will actually be able to get uh, computers from this millennium. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so, you know, what's funny about that, uh, we're not worth a million dollars, not in any market, but, um, in Birmingham, oddly enough, we actually sort of, I don't want to say we got started like having some traction as a band in Birmingham, but I think, I think we kind of had more traction there than in Atlanta where we're from. Um, people in Birmingham are really awesome. So I, I'm really stoked to go back and play. Not just an awesome fest like Furnace Fest, but there's going to probably be some people there that we haven't seen in a long time from Birmingham. So when we got started, we used to play in like Atlanta and we'd have like 40 or 50 people there. This is after our debut album came out, but we'd go play in the Birmingham area and we'd play for like 600 people. It was like night and day difference. That was like our hometown crowd, even though we were from like two hours away in a different state. Yep. Jeez. So you're saying that you that you climbed the peak of your of your band's mountain in Birmingham. Yeah. In yeah, fact, it was that if you remember, Jason, it was that CD release show where the coffin that I made for myself, like Queequeg, and you drew the image that I wood burned into the lid. We carried it into that CD release show and mailing open mainly the Sun's Disaster open for us. And we carried our merch in and had that coffin standing there behind our merch table. Yep. Six. Show. Is is that the one? Is that the one where you uh you, you were in the coffin, obviously, and then there was like Count Chocula, like just covered, like you were covered no, in Count Chocula when you thing. when you came out of it. <laughs> this is not a thing. I think the one time he tried to get in his coffin, he immediately was like, "Wow, this is wildly uncomfortable and too hot." I slept and in it one night in college, and it was very hot. It traps all your body yeah. heat. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying that you almost dead. would have to be dead in order for it you to helps. be in the coffin? Yes. It helps. I'm okay. dead. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, Maylene, that was Maylene uh, when they were really just starting. Um, yeah. 
if I remember correctly. They had just cool. started. Yep. That's 2005. Wow. Wow. So you guys basically hit the height of your career in 2005. <laughs> yep. 2005, 2006 was the height. And it was all downhill from there. I'm done with this interview now. <laughs> this is too real. This is too real. Do you feel a little What's sad is that was Jason? also the height. That was the height of death therapy was in 2005 and 2006. <laughs> <laughs> it was 10 years before the band was that existed. It was the height of my. Sweet. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, let's hear the true story around besides the million dollars. I'm sure there's a, a little bit of fabrication there about how you guys got roped into Furnace Fest. So let's hear the actual story besides the million dollars, because clearly that's the true part of the story. Well, you 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 basically required him to fabricate that story because I told you the true story, which was that yeah. we're friends with Chad and Chad was like, hey, you guys should play. It was that simple. Chad just was like, "Hey, uh, we, we may or may not have begged, feel... we may or may not have begged him." Okay, like, all right, that's <laughs> oh, Chad, so was the other please. I, I was we may imagining... or may not have begged for like four years. Like, hey, we'll get the band back together, please. Just let us play your festival. Chad Johnson, savior of my soul, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner, and we must play your festival. And then he said, "My sons, you may play." Yeah. And we it really was that. It really was that simple. Um, and so it's, well, you, I'm really great. That's what's interesting to me because it, it seemed like you guys were maybe not necessarily like all that interested in playing live, but for Furnace Fest, you were really interested. Yeah. See, yeah. this is the funny thing. When we came out with the album, Jason was like, I can't tour. I can't play shows. And so, you know, I yeah, was that's like, what okay, I remember. We're not, touring, we're not playing shows. And then August Burns Red reaches out about that thing last December. It was about this time last year. And I just ignored it because I thought we weren't playing shows. So then Jason's like, no, we got to do this. So I was like, okay, we'll do this. So we figure it out. And then that, that went so well that Jason suddenly like, okay, let's play audio feed and let's play Uprise Fest and let's play Furnace Fest and let's play uh, <laughs> Loud and Proud in Germany. And let's play this other festival next year in Switzerland, which we haven't announced yet. Let's do it all. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I thought we weren't playing anything, but I'm cool with this. So, you know, this is sort of a, a Jason thing of like what he's able and willing to do. And, and I'm just happy that the answer Great. to that able and willing to do is something. Now, every it, time we turn down something, it's going to be my fault. Yes, it <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Jason, you sound both like the wife and the husband in this relationship. <laughs> That's probably true. I was often, yeah, least, I was least often the band yoked. mom, I guess, in a lot of scenarios. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, well, we're so excited to see you at Furnace Fest. Uh, you know, I, I feel like Furnace Fest, it's been great. It's wonderful. It's a couple of the, you know, the, the couple times that we've gone. It's been some of the best memories that Colin and I have had. Uh, but if there has been anything that Furnace Fest has been missing, it's been that Becoming the Archetype hasn't played it yet. And so we're just so stoked to see you all. Well, and how cool, archetype and I'll say, that and how we're excited cool to see Archetype it, too. Yeah. How cool is it that we get to play? I mean, this is, to me, this is exciting. We get to play the same day as Extol and Living Sacrifice and Zayo. Yeah. So I feel like there's a little bit of a solid state thing going on there too, which is kind of like classic solid yeah. state, obviously. And Seth actually knows some of those bands. Yeah, yeah I've heard of those bands. He's heard of them. You know, they all you know, released albums before 2000. <laughs> Jason, you you bring up a good point because so when we first started, uh, a huge thing for us was uh, Tooth and Nail Day at Cornerstone Festival. That's right. And that would be like sort of the pre pre-fest day, you know, like a Thursday of the week or whatever. And it was just Tooth and & Nail and Solid State Bands. And I think Chad Johnson kind of orchestrated that most of the years, right? At least at the beginning, I think. Yeah. And so that was, I mean, that was one of our first really huge shows, even before Terminate Damnation came out. As we played, that was our only set at Cornerstone 2005, about a month before Terminate Damnation came out. And um, we were spreading posters all over the place. We had a two-song sampler they used to do, you know. And we were handing those out, and it was a it was a cool experience playing Tooth and Nail Day, and and now it's sort of coming full circle with Chad Johnson having us play a different fest on a sort of solid state day, right. you know? Yeah. Um, down and in people Kern, are Kern like, style's not solid state though. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Well, and um, and all you guys are you know fifteen, almost seventeen years older since that uh, last time you played 
Cornerstone. So there's going to be people who probably remember seeing you at Cornerstone that are going to be at Furnace Fest 17 years later, and they're still probably going to try to mosh as hard as they could, uh, you know, as they did 17 years ago. No, back pain. They're all going to be there with back pain. (laughs) No, there's a there's a whole there's a whole part of the festival grounds where you can take a bunch of like ibuprofen. <laughs> People are massaging you out. There's a chiropractor. Yeah. It's there's a guy with syringes. Yes, you know they, you just gotta look for him. There, there will be people moshing. Do not worry. I love this idea. I, I you know I will tell you we're excited to play and I haven't been yet. Duck has been, but I have not. And I met with some friends from Nashville uh, last year who went last year, man, not only did they have the best things to say about Furnace Fest, but they reminded me that there were a lot of bands that played that I I really regret not going to sing. I mean, if you remember, Mason, you were like, you know, if you need to, you I will pay for you to have a vacation or whatever it was, you know, to be down there. And I was like, yeah, but I can't get away, you know. And then and then later on, I find like Mastodon was there and, uh, you know, <laughs> Appleseed cast and like, all these bands that I would like are once and they just, they don't, well, at least opposite cast doesn't really play, you know, and I'm pretty bummed that I missed that. Yep. Yeah. That's still one of the best shows I've ever seen. So, man, but no, you had to serve the Eucharist. You had to preside over it. I had to preside over the <laughs> Eucharist. That's right. That's right. You know, that, that is actually something I'm kind of interested in is, uh, you know, J- Jason, are you going to be able to like stay for the entire weekend and, and, and hang out or like with, with school and everything like that? Um, are, do you have some like flexibility with time to be able to be away or you're just going to make the jaunt back and forth or what? Uh, that's a very personal question. And I think you should mind your own. I would just love to know if you're going to be there all weekend. Um, I, <laughs> I am not currently sure. Uh, I actually, if we want to get especially personal, I, I, I think, I think a couple of guys in the band have family that lives sort of in the area. So, um, it's possible some of the dudes in the band may be staying. I may be just hopping over there and going home because it's only a couple hours each way, two and a half, three hours, yeah. but, uh, we'll see. I'd love to stay and see bands play. I mean, um, there's lots of bands that I think are really great. Um, but I'm especially excited to get there and just see all the bands that are playing, the day we play regardless but yeah. that yeah. wasn't as yeah. personal as i was hoping i was hoping you're gonna be say like yeah i don't know if i can stay the whole weekend i've got a vasectomy coming up or something like that <laughs> oh man well, if only um <laughs> if only. Man, man i love getting vasectomies if only i had one scheduled <laughs> yeah oh, i great. usually get one done each year and have it reversed <laughs> I was hoping somebody would pick up the office reference. Uh, yeah, unintended Michael Scott. <laughs> Jason, who are you excited to see? Uh, e- even on like your, the day that you're going to be there, who, who are the couple of those bands that you mentioned? Extol. Um, yep. Because, well, I'll just say, so Extol is one of, uh, consistently one of our favorite bands that we all love. And um, same. I'm pretty sure the last time they were in the USA, we were with them. Um, oh. which was, uh, at a concert, was it, did we end that tour in Denver preemptively? It, it was a tour. It was our second tour ever was in support of Extol. And it was after that album blueprint or blueprint dives right. came out. And, yeah. uh, I think they did play cornerstone. So I think they ended at cornerstone and then Maybe they, so. they left. Then they, went, they went home preemptively. I think the tour, we cut the tour a little short or something. I feel like. But uh, anyway, yeah, I don't think they've been back to the USA since. And wow. super stoked. Um, some of my favorite musicians in the whole world are in that band. And then Living Sacrifice is playing. And we got a chance to tour with them as well back in the day. Um, and always loved seeing them. Zayo, another band that, yeah. So, These so are like all of the bands that we grew up listening to. So, Extol was yeah. our second tour. Zayo was on that Demon Hunter tour, which is the biggest tour we ever did. And Living Sacrifice was the last tour you did in BTA, I think, because yeah. that was December 2010. And then, Man, and then you were out. Bands should that. not tour with you guys. Well, we used to make that like, joke, actually. We Because a lot of the bands <laughs> that would tour with us would break up quickly after touring with us. And we used to joke that there was a curse. The curse of BTA. Yeah, the we curse were, of touring with yeah, us. Yeah, we were toxic to ourselves, and we had enough toxicity for it to overflow into the bands around us. Yes. We were we were that metal. Yeah. Speaking of toxicity, lots of System of a Down. 
in the band van. I was gonna say, um, did you guys tour with them no. too? Is that, that why they broke up? That's why they broke up. <laughs> that's why they won't get back together. <laughs> oh yeah, old surge. It, did you say that Turnstile's playing on the day? That Maybe they're playing? not. Maybe I'm misadvertising. I, I would, thought they were headlining the day that we were playing. They, they very uh, well might. I mean, but I would love to see yeah, you in the pit at uh, at Turnstile. I definitely, if they are playing as I think they are that day, they're one of the bands that I'm stoked to see. Um, yeah, I recently watched a, I watched a video of them playing it like in a in Florida or somewhere at like a rap festival, and they were the only yeah. like rock band, and they were awesome. They look one over the crowd and it was really good. So they are one of those bands yeah. that I think they can go to like a festival where it's completely like not hardcore. It's not like a yeah. heavy music festival at all. And they can win over crowds that are like, I've never been to something like this before, but I'm just going to like do whatever I feel like doing. And people just get won over by them. It's really cool to, to yeah. see them uh, the just kind of cross over. You're starting to see that quite a bit. You're starting to see that quite a bit in like the hardcore world. I mean, like Turnstile, or not not Turnstile, but um, Knock Loose did that as well. Right, they played at Coachella. Lollapool- Coachella, that's what it was. Yeah, and they absolutely lit it up there. It's it's funny. I think um, I think a lot of that has to do with oh, this is getting way too deep, probably. But I think a lot of that has to do with the way the the more like the metal and screaming vocal music. I don't want to call it scream up because I hate that word, but. Uh, has become normalized. I think more and more people are just like, this is actually kind of fun. And it's not something that only one demographic listens to anymore. We used to talk about stuff like that. I can remember riding in the van. We were like, you know, if Slipknot could just have like, you know, a one really big record, maybe like bands like us that scream could, you know, this was before Slipknot was like as huge as they are now. Um, Yeah. And now, like, like you said, I mean, there's bands that are playing Coachella festival that are all screaming all the time. And that's, pretty wild but it but is. i think that, i've even seen some i've seen some stuff where like these huge like um these huge like rap artists and pop artists are into into some of those bands and like advertising them or showing up at their shows randomly mm-hmm. and stuff so yeah that's crazy cool well, i think uh i think it was billy eilish that just had um there was like uh it dies today the band it dies today um she had a song of theirs on her instagram story and I guess like the guy from, or the lead singer from uh, it dies today was like trying to like figure out if it was a joke. If like someone was like, like just like playing a joke on yeah. it, but apparently she's like a huge fan. No, that's rad. I'm, I think that's, I think it's super cool how that's the case now. Um, yeah. But it definitely yeah, my, wasn't, it wasn't always the case. It was, uh, yeah. it definitely wasn't normal. Yeah. You guys at ends. least have a chance to actually sell records now. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah, now, you know what? We should really get the band back together. <laughs> no wonder you're wanting to play all these shows now. Yeah. Yeah, so we so, uh, can get all that money from which, Spotify. Uh, speaking of which, is uh, um, is the true lead guitarist of Becoming the Archetype going to be playing? The true lead guitarist. Which, wait, which what, one's what, the true one? What does that mean? We want to know. Nate, Nate Washburn. Is he the true lead guitarist? <laughs> In truth, he is currently the lead guitarist. Yes. In truth, he is currently our lead guitar player. Yes. Yes. Uh, Nate is playing lead guitar uh, for us. Nice. So he's going to be there. Yeah, cool. Sure. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, definitely Nate have to say hi to him too. Yes. Yeah. He, Nate is he, awesome. No, he you're not, not of, contractually. Uh, he hasn't signed with Solid State, so he cannot actually talk to anyone <laughs> that's not uh, previously been allocated as a, a conversation buddy yeah. for him. So. <laughs> You're it's gonna actually have to in his uh, the label. It's in his writer that he, he's not allowed to speak to anyone. <laughs> no one talks. Yeah, to email him. Adam Scatula and he can uh, see if he can get you uh, connected with the right people to fill out the proper affidavits and have a conversation with Nathan P. Washburn. What does the P stand for? Personal. Platypus. <laughs> we, we don't know. I don't even. I, I don't think it is P. I don't. I don't even know what his middle name is. I don't know. I think it's Percival, from what I understand. Nathan I understand. Percival I, Washburn. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Pendragon. Yeah. We, it's, it's we very are, nice of him to take uh, some time from my epic to play with uh, BTA. That what a nice thing for him to do. Yeah, yeah well, he's taken he, off that that total like three hours a year he spends doing my epic uh, shows to, <laughs> to do some BTA <laughs> stuff. We're very appreciative. That's not true. They just did a tour. You're a maniac. Yeah, they did. They more than we have this year. Oh, never, yeah, they, never they mind. played 10 minute sets, so it ended up being Please a total take of three back hours. Your words. So. 
they're super cool. But yeah, um, yeah, he's gonna they be are. playing. He's gonna be playing lead guitar and uh, Duck and me and Seth doing the thing. So sweet. Look at you look we'll at you, there. Seth. Who? Um, I you. I mean, besides the the three bands that actually existed before 2000 that you're excited to see. Are there any other bands that you've seen um, that will be at Furnace Fest that you're like, oh, I definitely need to see them? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not a huge Goaty Hook fan, but I did have their albums and they haven't played in a long time. So that'll be fun. I mean, I like pop punk and that'll be fun to watch. Um, kind of the same with the insiders. Like, I mean, I, I, I wasn't a gigantic fan, but that, I mean, ska is always fun, you know, and, you were in a ska band even. Well, I wasn't in the band, but I did fill in for one tour, yes. Um, which would be really fun. It'd be great if they had like a ska day and they had like Real Big Fish and, you know, bands like that that played Mephiscopheles and bands like that. But I know that's not one Five Iron played last year and uh, yeah. that would have been fun, but but I wasn't there. So, yeah. Um, Reliant K is like, playing. Who is? That's right. Reliant K. Oh, uh, yeah, I might see them. Uh, you know, <laughs> MXPX is playing. Are they? Yeah, yeah. they existed before 2000. <laughs> oh, Mix Pix. I'll probably watch MXPX. Um, in haste, the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jason mentioned some bands like Extol, you know, we'll definitely watch them and Living Sacrifice. Um, I don't remember. So, I mean, you know, a lot of the bigger bands I'm not as familiar with. I will probably watch Training for Utopia, but it's funny. I was texting a uh, Ryan Clark the other day about that. And, uh, Oh, name dropper. Was, uh, I hope yeah. it's okay for me to say this, but like, <laughs> just he, texting uh, Ryan I, Clark. I was no big well, deal. I was talking about, I was talking about playing, you know, and he's like, yeah, you know, speaking of which, I gotta, I gotta really get on, you know, remembering these songs with Training for Utopia. I was like, oh, you know, just like read the lyric books to remember your lyrics, you know, and then just, you know, scream along. And he's like, yeah, but dude, the recordings from back then are so like, you know, lo-fi and indie. Like sometimes I just, I can't tell what's happening in the songs. I just thought that was <laughs> That's kind of why funny. We love it. Like, you listening and yeah. you're like, what's happening in this song? And how do I figure out how to do vocals to this again? You know? Oddly enough, that's how it is for me, uh, learning becoming <laughs> becoming archetype. But not because the recordings are bad or anything. The recordings are great. It's just, I'm tone deaf. And I can't <laughs> figure out what's happening. Musically, at any point. do you guys remember uh, the song "New York City Is Overrated" by Training for Utopia? Yes, I hope I really hope they play that. That was I listened to that recently on like one of those solid state samplers that that came out, and I was like, yeah. man, this was like kind of. I remember when this when I got this sampler, and I was just, it was such a weird industrial song, you know, and uh, I'd never heard anything like that. I'm, I think that'll be a lot of fun. I mean, I. I don't know a lot of the other songs, but that one was kind of fun. You used to uh, you used to listen to Further Seems Forever, right? Oh, are they playing? Yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. I will watch Further Seems Forever. Oh, <laughs> is what's his name uh, singing with them? Um, oh, what's his name? You know, Not the big Chris guy. Caraba. Chris Caraba. Yeah. He, no, it's going to be Jason Gleason, who is their second singer yeah. on the second okay. album. That's fine. Yeah, that album was really good too, though. <laughs> Acceptable. <laughs> That's, I mean, really, that's the best word for it. I mean, I, I would probably prefer Chris Caraba, but I would rather be that second guy than the third guy. So, you know, there you go. You know, what I'm just realizing is, uh, we, again, we've been doing all these Furnace Fest bands. The last three recordings uh, or the last couple recordings that we've done have all been with bands that are from Georgia. You guys, Every, Showbread, yeah. we just interviewed Showbread recently, and Chasing Victory. Have you, and what about and later you? on. Where and, are they at? Got to get them. Well, we, we have interviewed Norma Jean, but uh, we haven't for yeah. this for this kind of Furnace Fest series. But there's so many Georgia bands. Tomorrow we also have uh, with Blood Comes Cleansing. Are they from oh, Georgia sick. too? Yeah. See, I'll probably yeah. I'll probably watch them. Showbread was our first tour, so we talked about his tour history. Think Showbread oh took us on our very Snow first Beast. tour we ever did. Yeah. Um, and I turned uh I turned 20 on that tour. We left on the tour, and I was still 19. And uh, the showdown was on that, and uh, Point Mortal Zero Treason. became War of Ages was on that tour. Um, yeah, it was it was a uh, it was kind of a fun time. But uh, yeah, they were from they were from uh, <laughs> they were from Georgia. At the last show of the tour, they came out in cowboy boots and tiny shorts, and uh, couldn't stop laughing <laughs> while they were playing the first song because of how ridiculous they looked. Do you remember that, Jason? I wasn't laughing. I think I remember <laughs> everyone you having that exact was laughing. Same look. Except Jason. Very serious. 
very serious. Didn't you do that exact same look, Seth, in like 2012? Ah, man, I wish I could. I would love to wear cowboy boots and like booty shorts. That would be uh, that'd be fun to pull that, off. That picture of you with you that cowboy well. hat is like one of the more epic pictures we've ever had to to post on like social media. <laughs> Troy Staines took that picture because uh, I had those huge glasses on. He's like, I have to capture your essence. And so he was he was in the studio when we were doing Celestial Completion. And he, he was the one that took the pictures for us for dichotomy. Or he was in the with working with the guy who took our pictures for dichotomy, which was a really fun photo shoot as well. But he did he did the celestial completion ones where like we're levitating in the air on the back of the back of the album and, and all that stuff. He he's yeah. a really cool guy. Cullen, do you remember back around, it was before Slush Yield Completion, I think it was around Dichotomy years, but I think our youth group had like posters of like different albums, and I think there was like a BTA Dichotomy poster like in the hallway going into the boom room, remember that? I do not think so. I could have swore there was like a Becoming the Archetype Your youth group had a boom room? It's called, it was, we called, our youth group was called Boom. (laughs) And we called it the boom room. Not the boom boom room. Okay. The boom yeah. Room. Is that based it's on good like for BOD's broken, boom? obedient, open messengers? Here comes the boom. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when youth groups like had acronyms like that? Just good old days. Now, now they're just called like, uh, like city church or some stupid like dumbass name. Journey. Oh. I can just remember when every youth group was called something like the basement or the underground or the garage. And it was all people were trying to give this idea of like, Hey, teenagers want to come to a place. that's like dark and dank and like, not, you know, not, not sanitary. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what they want. Industrial. Yeah. So people would build these multi-million dollar facilities to make them look like crap for the youth. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. My sister, I mean, I'm I'm from a small town in South Dakota. My sister went to one called U-Turn. Uh, and it was in this old like warehouse and it was no frills except for us, like a, like a wooden stage in the middle. Uh, and I went there one time with her and I felt like the coolest person in the world, well. the coolest person in the world. I was like, I am in a place that no person the my culture. age should be. The culture here is <laughs> yeah, the so culture. good. I was like, I feel like I am the embodiment of new metal right that's now. That's the band. That, that's the band I need. I need a uh, Ooh, embodiment. embodiment reunion. Embodiment. That would be. But sweet. then I just have to be a curmudgeon awesome. and stand around and be like, well, I wish they'd play "Embrace the Eternal" material, and they probably wouldn't. <laughs> and you know, so that's just. We toured. We toured with Embodiment. Were you in the band then? Is that when they broke up? Tour with embodiment. You're <laughs> no, about sorry, we toured the, the famine. famine. Sorry, the famine. Yeah, that's right. That's the right. famine was the awesome. Famine, yeah. Love the famine. Those guys were great. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. That's actually one of my all-time favorite album covers. Is the, the I can't remember the name of the album all of a sudden. Which one? The um, Raven and the Reaping, or the one, second one? The uh, what's that? One the second one with like that like Pope looking like. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the yeah. name now. I, I can't. Someone remember Someone listening to this is screaming. I'm at their. I'm pulling it up right yeah. now. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, you got uh, the, the, internet over the there? architects of guilt. Architects of yeah. guilt. That's totally it. This yeah. is not going to be a very good Dude, picture of it, but I'll show it, show it to you guys here. That is the coolest album cover ever. It I is think. a really cool album cover. I'm this pretty one? sure that's a that's a Clark yep. Brothers uh, thing. I think it, it does have a very Clark, yeah. Clark Brothers <laughs> vibe, doesn't it? It's got that like Norma Jean. Uh, uh, what's their the record they did after Scoggin left? The oh, oh god, god, the aftermath yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Yeah, anyway. Love it. Well, we're super stoked to see you at Furnace Fest. It's going to be a good time. I've never seen Becoming the Archetype ever play live. So this is going to be... That's not true. We both did at Sunshine. But... Oh, that's right. We, we did not get to it see it. It wasn't memorable, apparently. <laughs> it was so memorable, Mason. We will try to, we will try to, to uh, get just below Mason that level. wiped it from his memory. Well, hey, was, well here's the deal. That was, was that back when Mason I was a libertarian, not... so I have wiped most of those memories out of my memory. <laughs> hey, was that in 2010? Do you guys remember? 12, 2012. Oh, so it was one I of the last there. years of Jason Sunshine. Wasn't in the band then. So I yeah. wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Jason wasn't there. Okay. In fact, I've never seen you guys with Jason in the band either, and I'm I'm beyond excited. Mm. Really? What, what is beyond me. excited? You're excited to see me, is what you're saying. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think your, I think man your scream is one of the coolest screams really? ever. Oh, thank you. Like it feels, it feels old school, in a way that like doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Well, he isn't. Like, you know what I mean by that? Like, it's, it's a, it's a I real think he's. Thing. I think he's just saying you're old, not old school. <laughs> I just don't know if the, I just don't know how I feel about this. I feel like it's almost like I don't know if we're like, yeah, my favorite comedian growing up was Red Skelton. He was hilarious <laughs> in, Red Skelton. in ways that nobody else has been hilarious. And it's like, <laughs> oh man, you basically just mean before things were funny. Um, no, Red so, so what I'm saying, funny. what I'm saying, your is voice like, is great, Jason. It reminds me of back before all the good vocalists came around. <laughs> I don't think that there's a lot of great good like screamers these days though. Mm. Not 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 really. Well, I'll put I mean, on your, a clinic. Yours feels authentic. Real. How about that? Free, free vocal say, lessons. I'll do a clinic for them at Furnace Fest. There you go. Oh, please do. Please do. <laughs> on stage. I I really want to yeah. like I want you to test out how loud your scream actually is because we've heard on here before that your scream is so loud that like if you were in a car with somebody and you screamed what you would be actually like scream, it would like pop somebody's eardrums. I don't and know so, about the physical popping of eardrums. That's never been a verified uh, scientific. It, is, it could be possible, though. Uh, <laughs> and the fact that it's even possible means that it's clearly very loud. So well, um, see, I would I... love to see you like actually scream without the microphone. Uh, and see if like people could still hear you. Well, dude, you should. If I it. forget the lyrics, I will give you a demonstration of that. I'll just go do. off mic and just start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Are you like the scariest teacher at your school because of that too? Like, have you ever had to pull out that scream when you're like, if some kids are misbehaving? Because like, no. like you know, it's no, one I'm thing awful. if your teacher I'm like yells at you, but if like they're if your teacher is professionally able to scream like has been paid to scream that's like another level of like oh you do not want to get in I've, uh you know piss off mr wisdom I've pretty much never s screamed like that in or even close to that at any student group of students and i've de and i've never screamed like that at my children um i it's it's a funny it's a funny thing like i don't think anyone and maybe this is why we uh are just a weird band um, but like, I don't think any of us got into metal because we were angry or anything. I think we all just liked the music. And so like, yeah. none of like between, between the four people who will be playing at this festival, I think there's what, four, ta three tattoos total, like <laughs> a, amongst a yeah. band. Like, I don't have any, you know what I mean? I'm saying like, there's just no, we're just, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm probably the least scary teacher in a lot of ways. I'm really bad at like, the most master degrees between uh, a band too, probably at Furnace probably, Fest. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, that's it's interesting to me. I think uh, in a way, the the metal thing like is more of like just the art form and the like the drama is what drew us all in. We love the like. To me, it's almost like a nerdy like role playing type of thing. It's like I'm gonna be this character of like, you know, this, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think there's something to yeah. metal about that anyway. I think that's why a lot of people can listen to metal and it calms them down and they chill out. It's because it's almost like a drama performance in a totally. way. Yeah. Um, so there is that are what some you people, have to do? There are some people who legitimately are doing metal because they want to destroy things and crush everything. And when we recorded with Devin Townsend, that was like, that was his mindset. He's like, to me, metal is about chaos and like, destroying everything and, and you guys are coming to doing metal yeah that's why he couldn't do it anymore. at the time he wasn't doing metal at all because of that and then he came back around and um yeah and i was making heavy music that's a look like it's got more of a positive energy vibe i guess is what he would say and i think it's really cool yeah. um not that we had anything to do with that necessarily but that's really cool um so yeah you sound like someone who's listened to a little bit of dio in his life me like yeah, I mean, like, like when you talk about like the drama I mean, of metal music, I, like that's like that's who I imagine being like the like Mister Drama of like like, like it's like like it's a, a theater production. Dio almost. Dio is okay. He's not necessarily one of my favorite things. I was super super into and annoyed everyone else in the band with lots of dream theater. Um, oh yeah, so, yeah, th that's along the same lines. But that's not even like the same vocal style, though. You know what I mean? Totally, I that's not to what me, I mean by to that. To me, honestly, the album I think that got me into that 
that was was blood and fire by zeo it was like it oh, was yeah. such a different it wasn't it wasn't just a musical experience for me i can remember being like actually scared at times of certain things happening on that record um it was really cool so. um i've hearing dio live in the shed are we talking about dio? Not, dio, not, not 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 dio sorry <laughs> zeo uh, it, when i saw zeo in the shed live yes uh, I actually was like terrified and I have seen a lot of metal bands. That's the only time I can actually remember being scared. Well, that didn't, like, and it was like, so wow. fucking loud. The, that was part of it, but it was it like, how did bands pull that like, off? They always tell us to turn down. I've never, <laughs> I've never understood how people are like, that's the loudest actually, band I've actually, ever heard. I'm like, the sound guys make us turn down. Like the best example of that was when we used to do occasionally we do in stores and like hot topics. <laughs> And there was one in like Kansas City or somewhere where they, you're in a mall, so you already know you can't go super loud. But then they kept asking right. us to turn down. And like after every song, the like mall cop would come in there and talk to the manager. And we got to the point where literally uh, Jason didn't have a microphone. <laughs> Duck was playing with like the brushes rather than actual sticks. <laughs> and we had turned our guitars down so low that we may as well have been unplugged. And we were and playing so in the like fun. hot topic lingerie section, like <laughs> lingerie wall next to us. It's on YouTube somewhere. You can find it. Becoming <laughs> becoming the jazz band. And then they made us <laughs> and then they made us quit playing anyway. So it was like whatever. Yeah, yeah, that like, was pretty so great. quiet and super awkward. Yeah, that was uh, that is was that the first time you game. ever saw lingerie in real life? Probably for yeah. both of you. Yeah, sure. That's the first time we saw we saw any kind of girls' topic. clothing other than t-shirts and long. Oh, here it shirts, is! You know? Here it is! Oh my you god! On YouTube. <laughs> All right, I'm pulling this up. This is awesome. You really are right behind a bunch of. Uh... <laughs> There's like the little like bikini or uh, or like laundry <laughs> stuff in the back. And and look at what song we're playing. We're playing "How Great Thou Art." <laughs> it's, a, it's a metal version of an old hymn. And the hot topic lingerie section at half volume, or not even half volume. Yeah, tenth volume. And Daniel, I think that's how Daniel Jesus Gailey would have there with his backwards hat when he was about four years old, um, pre fit for a king and Phineas. Look at look, look at him drumming. He's just he's barely tapping the things. <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, that's um, hilarious. Yep, there you go. I now missed that know. gold that guitar, awesome. man. All right, we got to get going because uh, Cullen's got a, a kid to pick up. But uh, okay. let's talk That's about right. artists. Wh which one do we want to do, Cullen? Let's go artists that you should like on paper, but you don't. All right, Seth, you go first. Wait, what? I, I haven't figured mine out yet. I, I thought someone else was going to go first. <laughs> well, clearly Jason hasn't figured his out either. <laughs> artists, that I sh artists that I should like on paper, but I don't. But you don't. Oh, uh, I got mine. Becoming the archetype. I should like that band because I'm in it, and I hate that band. That doesn't count. That doesn't work. Um, whose paper is this? Who is the one who thinks that I so should like, like these bands? Based off of all the other stuff that you listen to, okay, you should probably like this band. But there's just something about it that doesn't like really, you know, hmm. jive well, with Jason. You. Mostly listens to country, so. He's just going to have to give you like Brooks and Dunn or something that, you know, based on yeah, the stuff he listens fine. to, he should like, but he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, that's totally fine. No, no, I don't, I don't listen to country really at all. Although I uh, did recently <laughs> discover Tyler Childers uh, was recommended to me. Oh, and that's kind of, oh my God. that's kind of cool. I was kind of into that. So good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's new to me. And then um, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of a band that I'm, I should like, but I don't. I don't like. Um, maybe Dio. Dio, maybe I should, but I, I mean, I think. I guess I would think like. Uh, I mean, should I even mention a band that's playing Furnace Fest? Because then they just like. They so totally oh, yeah. juicy! Yeah. Please do. Oh, uh, Duck was super into uh, Between the Berry to me, um, yeah. and he's, I assume he still is. And I think on paper it would make sense that I should like them because I love progressive metal i love dream theater uh, i think they've toured with dream theater um mm -hmm. just never never got into them it's not that i hate them or anything it just never right. got into them so yeah. yeah that would be my band that i've probably i guess on paper should like but maybe i'll see them at uh see them at furnace fest and i'll love them maybe yeah no that's a, that's a perfect example they don't need me perfect to love example. them though honestly they're doing really well as a band 
They're, they're, doing they're fine that. without me. <laughs> yeah. That's How about you, Seth? Me. Yeah, probably Brooks and Dunn. Um, you know, <laughs> I once listened to country <laughs> and I thought it was all right. So you would think I would like all the country bands, but, um, but that I can't one, you tell you a song by Brooks and Dunn. In Atlanta, and around Atlanta. Neon Ream? And uh, <laughs> all the country folks. Um, okay. So, so because we're in a metal band, we should probably say um, some kind of heavy music related thing. No, not necessarily. Thing. I mean, you could. You can if you want. It's up to you, man. What about the W's? Were you a big fan of the W's? I did not like the W's that much. They were a swing band, and I well, was you a should have liked them. guy. So, yeah, not a big fan of the W's. Although, You Are the Devil and the Devil is Bad was a pretty good song, but the rest of their stuff was garbage. So, the W's can man. suck it, you know? <laughs> That's going to be the pull well, quote from More this. like the L's Shots is fired. what they were. The I like the W's. Don't, don't say that. I was into the swing. I I, re, I bought into the swing thing whole Wow. Article. Yeah. I thought it was going to be the new it was the new ska? The new thing. You were a cherry pop and daddy is what you're saying, huh? <laughs> yeah, squirrel nut zippers, cherry nope. pop and daddies. Brian Setzer Orchestra. Big voodoo daddy. Yeah. Hey, big yeah. bad voodoo daddy, man. That's good stuff. A big bad voodoo daddy. Zoot suit riot. A... Zoot yeah. suit riot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Seth, what is your answer? I think it's the W's. <laughs> okay. I'm glad this I can, right. I'm glad I can help you get answer. there. I'm glad I can help you. You know, <laughs> oddly enough, we mentioned them earlier. And I I mean, I'm not trying to answer for you, but I don't think you ever liked Reliant K as much as the rest of us did, even though at the time you were into pop punk, like you loved MXPX. <clears> and it, it would have made sense on paper. You should have liked Reliant K like the rest I of actually, the band did. I really did like their first album, but then when they stopped dissing Marilyn Manson and calling him evil, I, you know, it just didn't do it, it for didn't me stink anymore. as much. So, <laughs> yeah. um, that first album was really. Is that because fun. you never were asked to? You were never invited to a Sadie Hawkins dance. Is that like where you just were like, yeah, nope, see, so I can't like do when they came anymore. out with that album, everybody at my school was like super into that and Sadie Hawkins dance. And I was just like, ah, it it sounds too like generic rock to me. There was there was this transitionary time if you guys remember oh. when like pop bunk bands occasionally had songs with like a rock beat but most of the songs were like faster and had that faster galloping drum beat you know with the snare on the end you know and then they all started transitioning this regular you know the regular rock beat and it wasn't really pop punk anymore and that was reliant k went and yet you like jimmy eat world I do like uh, Bleed American quite a lot. Yeah, I think but it has no to do with your expectations. Jimmy World Record. I don't like <laughs> any of their Jimmy World Records at all. I think it's all on you, Seth. Yep. Take yeah, responsibility. Well, Take ownership for your I think lack you should go of back and respect to for Reliant K Records. Records now that you don't necessarily crave music with a super fast punk drum beat, and you might be like, these records are really good. Yeah, maybe. There's lots of music I might <laughs> think is pretty good. Okay, I, I, I prefer true. to stick with the ones I know. That's true. There is lots of music you might think is pretty good. <laughs> There's actually a lot of music out there I might think is pretty good. What? What a <laughs> statement! So, uh, is are we doing the flip side of this question? I mean, we can if you got time. I mean, does Colin have time? I have an answer to. I've got. I've got time. Right. Go, go for it. This is so. So, so this is so a band. Th- these are. Yes, bands that uh, you do like that you probably like at least on paper people would be like, wait, you like that band, or like you don't really like any other bands like them, even though you like this one band. Hmm. So Mason, you should probably give yeah. An example. For, so for example, I'm not really into a lot of like neo folk stuff. There, there's a few like Bon Iver songs that I like, and there's mm. a few of those artists Whatever. like Fleet Fleet Foxes. I like a couple of their albums, but I adore Sufjan Stevens. Anything he does, I absolutely love. Uh, so that's a band that I'm like, I shouldn't probably like Sufjan, but for whatever reason, I'm just like super into Sufjan. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So any bands like that for you or any artists? So uh, this is based on stuff my wife has gotten me into mainly. Um, and we've seen them, both of these artists a couple of times, but like my wife's into bluegrass and I'm not really into bluegrass. Um, but um, Evo Donovan who um, has played in a couple of different bands is really fun. More like, um, I don't know, Irish folk or, or bluegrass type stuff. Um, and then the other one is Tanari Wynn, who is a Berber band from like the Sahara. 
and they sing in like a you know uh, Tuareg language half the time. Um, Whoa, and cool. I don't even know another band like that. I mean, I'm sure there are bands, but I don't, whatever genre they are, uh, I don't listen to those other bands in that genre. So, uh, they're like a kind of a one-off for that kind of thing for me. Interesting. I dig that. Well, there you go. Fine. I've never heard of any of that. <laughs> See, this is, I, I mentioned this. To, so I saw languages. Mason. I saw Mason the Twin Cities in May at the Festival of Homiletics, which is a fancy way of saying like a preaching conference. And um, I was talking to him about that. And I was like, I do listen to music that's made since the 90s. It's just they're not bands. I think anyone's even heard of us. And they're not bands, really. They're they're like bluegrass tangential artists that my wife has got. So I don't there's no like it's a dead end when you mention them. People are like, hmm. Okay, and then the conversation moves on because they, they there's no frame of reference there for that kind of stuff. They're not indie rock or anything. They're just they're just something else. So I, it doesn't do any good to mention them, you know. Like there you go. I think it does. It probably means a lot to them. Oh, I'm sure Tanari Wynn is just leaping up and down because they're over there they, in Africa, thinking, "Oh, Seth, Count Seth, Lord of Death, from becoming the archetype." Allegedly, has allegedly. mentioned us. Yeah, they need it. Wow. Um, so uh, I guess, again, this this to me is like, well, it depends on who's making the list, because I think when you play in a metal band, especially if the vocalist for a metal band, people make assumptions about what you like to listen to. Um, and, and that you I have tattoos. I don't particularly listen to a lot of metal. Um, I do like some metal. So I'm trying to think which which direction is the best way to go. I'll give you two answers. How about that? Great. One. Mm-hmm answer is that probably the person the music i've listened the most to in the past 10 years is a um christian singer songwriter guy named andrew peterson and i'm a huge fan of andrew peterson he's been around since the 90s and uh i love his stuff um it's just like americana like folk stuff anyway so you might not know that i would listen to that although um i've named some death therapy stuff after his stuff he's written a book series called the wing feather saga that i read and my children love and um it's a fantasy series there's a show anyway okay so there's that on the one side you might not have expected that on the other side um i found out i didn't know this um it sounds like donald trump like frankly i wouldn't say this but um uh, not me <laughs> but other people have said that becoming the archetype apparently is viewed by some as a hipster band like only like you get you're a hipster if you like becoming the archetype. I don't think we're a hipster band. I just think we're not cool. So it's not that, you know, <laughs> hipsters like to say they like music that's bad to make other people like them. We're so just we're a, bad. We're a bad band. Yeah, man. we're just not good. Yeah. So um, I don't think we're hipsters. But um, there definitely was a time where I think people interpreted us as thinking like, oh, well, we're not into like popular whatever's popular in the scene right now. There's like, there's a band that's clearly the most dominant popular, uh, heavy band and they're called sleep token. And oh, yeah. I have, I have so many friends who are like these old, like metal grouchy metal heads that are my age. And they're like, Oh, I just can't understand why people like these guys. They're so dumb. And I'm like, I don't know. I think they're awesome. Um, so I really like them. <laughs> yeah. So that might be one that people might not expect. Um, I like them. I, That's a great example. Yeah, I also love Ghost. I think Ghost is amazing. Ghost is awesome. Like, oh, I, I don't dude, care what anyone like, says. That's just like pop metal. I'm like, whatever. I I like it. it sounds Imagine good. Dragons. I'm catchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I love that Mormon. Do. That Mormon rock. Yep. Billy Eilish is cool. Yep. Mormon. Oh wait, wait. Imagine Dragons is Mormon. Yeah, they're from yeah. Utah. Oh my gosh. They're okay. I really like them now. I've been looking for ways to support some Mormon rock. <laughs> Get more in my, well, my who else is, there's, there's The Killers. The, the Killers are the Mormon, killers. too. The Killers are also yeah. Mormon. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Man, if The Killers was playing at Furnace Best, Seth would be so bummed. Yeah, they had some good albums. Those first two albums are great. I love them. I just saw The Killers. They were great. Yeah. They're You'll awesome. You'll find out that Seth too. only likes the first album that anyone ever puts out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is why people think we're hipsters. <laughs> I only like their or he's stuff. talking about Berber bands or something like that. So. 
conglomerate Berber. Dude, bands. look up so Tenari many... Win on Spotify and tell me if you don't like it. Their their top songs are. Oh, I'm sure I'm gonna love it, man. I I have a pretty eclectic taste, but you know, it's just. It's just kind of funny when you when you claim you're not a hipster and then you you say shit like that. <laughs> I just I named I just named, I just named like three bands that I like that have like four million listeners on Spotify monthly. So no hipster. See, that, over see here. that's the thing though. So like Tenari <laughs> Wynn has like a lot of listeners. They're just not our. They're just not us. They're like it's like know, that band right. Beach House I mentioned at the last Black Sheep one. It's like they have listeners. They're just not you and me for the so most why part. Don't Beach House has tons listeners. of listeners. Yeah. Anyway. Please, yeah. please don't right. listen to our album. <laughs> well, speaking of which, what do you guys want to plug besides uh, an unbelievable album, one of our favorites from last year? Uh, what do you want to plug? I still want to plug the album. Uh, I still have friends that are like, I didn't know you put out a new album. And I'm like, oh, are you serious? Look at this guy bragging about having friends when he's 40 years old. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, yes. Okay. Jesus, Jesus Christ Jesus over here having friends miracle. in his 30s. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus' greatest miracle. <laughs> Um, if, if I had friends, I would totally be telling them about this album. Yeah, but actually, yeah, I've, I've still found out that somehow or another, we had a guy who's I've known for a long time. He came and actually ran sound for us at uh, at up or what was it called? Audio, Audio feed. feed. And he was like, "Man, I thought that was just a reissue with a new cover for Terminate Damnation because it's it kind of <laughs> looks like a flipped like it's flipped around and the color it scheme does, has changed." Yeah. It's like a negative. And he's like, dude, yeah. I didn't know you put out a new album. And he went listen. He's like, this is awesome. So I'm hoping, honestly, I'm really hoping that that's the case for most of the people in the world, and that yeah, they just didn't know. It's not that they ignored us, but they they just needed someone on the Black Sheep podcast to tell them that we actually have a new album. Please check it out. Well, that's what we're here for. That's yep. what we're here for. Uh, it sounded yeah. like at least a, a show overseas that people could expect. Any other shows that maybe we could see besides Furnace Fest? Yeah, if you're in the Northeast, the week before Furnace Fest, we'll be playing a, a festival called Uprise Fest uh, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then in October, we'll be playing in Germany. And then next spring, and we haven't really formally announced it yet, but we might by the time that you air this. They've, uh, they've, an they've announced that we're playing, so you can announce it. Okay, yeah, we're playing in Switzerland in Zurich uh, wow. in like next April. So that'd be a lot of fun. So you can finally get closer closer to your socialist roots over there when you play those festivals. That's yeah. right. I'm sure. That's I'm right. sure Jason's really excited. Lots, Either that lots of socialists that invest, investing their money there. <laughs> <laughs> and with the with the last time I was there, I was told that they that they actually the people who live there have hundred year mortgages. Um, because the cost what? of living is so high. And I was like, I was like, oh wow, did you know, mortgage is wild. Did you know the word mortgage means death pledge, mort being death? So uh, it kind of makes sense in some ways to have it last like a mortician. The actual death. Yeah. yeah. Mortgage. That's death. awesome. To death pledge. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> that, that should be like the new band name, Mortgage. Yeah. Mort the next album, <laughs> Mortgage. <laughs> Nothing's like the most movie. the most metal the most metal title lady bands <laughs> mortgage. Yeah, either that or it's Death Therapy's next album name. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if there was any new music from Death Therapy, that'd be great. But all right, anyway, you guys are wonderful. We're excited to see you at Furnace Fest. It's gonna be fun to thank hang you. out. So uh, thank you so much, uh, and yeah. we're excited to see you. I'm looking forward to you guys buying me those beers that you promised me. I'm very excited about that. We're looking so forward to it. I'm down for it. Let's do it. Can I get a, a soda? <laughs>